What's up guys, welcome back to Modified. Now I know it's been a little while since I last posted, but do not worry, we're gonna get back to regular uploads. And well, behind me as you can see, that is not the red truck we last left off with. Yes, that's right, we are back and we are back in blue, baby. Now, I'm not gonna take a whole video to introduce this truck because basically in a nutshell, this truck is exactly like the red one. A year older, a little bit less miles, but it's basically the same truck. Laramie 2500, but this truck actually packs a few extra goodies. Unlike the previous truck, this truck is running some aftermarket wheels. This thing does have fuels on it. These are 20 by 10s with some 305 20s on it. They look pretty okay in my opinion. I love the stance. I like the tire, but the design of the wheels, not my favorite, but for now it'll do. It looks pretty good. We might switch it up because we did get the stocks with this truck maybe put some bigger tires on the stocks we'll see who knows now like i said guys the biggest difference in this truck is the color now i don't know about you guys red might be your thing it really wasn't my thing it was okay color but i just love this blue this blue is actually called deep water blue they only made it two years 2010 and 2011 so i don't want to say it's a rare color but it's probably a little bit harder to find this truck does have the gray two-tone uh, i'm not a huge two-tone fan but i think with this color it looks pretty good i do believe that if i did go with black wheels and blacked out accents i don't think it would look as good as the chrome so i think kind of like with the red one we're going to keep the chrome trim look going on just because of that silver two-tone now first up let's start with the goods this truck came with now in addition to our wheels this truck does have an smb air intake just like our red one in addition to our intake this thing actually already has an exhaust on it but here's one problem with it it's too quiet for me it's a four inch with a muffler in it and that's just not loud enough i can guarantee that's going to be switched out for a five inch straight pipe stainless steel of course another cool thing this truck has is it's a, got a color matched bed liner now i haven't seen a whole bunch of these as far as color matched bed liners i guess it's not too common it's kind of cool I don't know if I'd spend the extra money to get it done if I was doing it, but it definitely looks pretty cool with the rest of the truck. Now, one last goodie this truck did come with, which is no longer in it, was it did have tuning on it already. Now, because you saw it had the intake and the exhaust, and with these newer trucks, you have to have some type of tuning to be able to run those mods. So the previous owner did have a DSP-5 switch in this thing. I don't know what tunes were on it, so I'm just going to go ahead and let the secret out. We've already got tunes for this truck, and it uses a different type of switch, so now all that's been taken out. So that's the cool features this truck came with. And also, one other thing I didn't mention was it came with a nice bed cover, which is pretty useful. I don't have it on there right now just because with my job, it's easier to have a bed cover off because it would get in the way. So that's why it's not on it right now, but we do have that. But also, we should get to the stuff I've already done to this truck. Because like I said, it's been a little while since I've uploaded, so we have already started doing some mods to this truck. But do not worry, you guys haven't missed anything. It's basically the same stuff we did on the red one. So I didn't really feel like vlogging it was kind of, you know, just the same old stuff. Didn't really want to do it again because, well, you guys already seen it. So first up, we did the headlight mod. You guys know I love this mod. It's one of my favorite modifications on these older fourth gens, updating them to these Laramie headlights. And like I said, guys, we did the same route. We went on Marketplace and found us some very nice OEMs. And that's what we went with. But... Our tail lights are still the original incandescents, which we're still looking for as far as the LED OEMs. So that is to come. Now, another thing I went ahead and had done, like on the red truck, was I've had this thing tinted. I actually went with a 5% all the way around. I think last time I did like a 20% on the front, and this time I just went full 5%. As you can see, this thing looks totally blacked out, especially with the windows in the back since they already had some type of tint on them from the factory. Now, another reason I went with this darker tint this go around is because, well, one of the bigger differences is besides the blue exterior color is we have a black interior, ladies and gentlemen. Now, that's another thing I really like, black interior. That is just something that, you know, I like. I think a black interior on a car or truck is the best. The tan, not so much. I feel like it shows more dirt. That's just preference, though. So there's that. Also, back to the mods we've done to this truck. We got some Husky floor liner mats. This is not really a big deal, not really video worthy to make a video on, but I will give you guys an update. I'm pretty happy with them. Uh, the reason I didn't go WeatherTech this go around is I've had a couple older vehicles with WeatherTechs, and it seems like always with some of the WeatherTechs, they're softer material, and they tend to kind of uh, warp, I guess you would say. 
So that's why we went Husky this go around and we'll see how we like these. And they're guaranteed for life, so I think we should be pretty happy with them. We went ahead and did our coolant riser mod. As you know from the last videos, same deal, but with one little change. I'm not sure how well you can see it, but instead of our bracket going to this top bowl up here, or I'm sorry, this top stud up here, we went to the bottom one so it makes it easier to get a ratchet on and a wrench. Now, if you guys might've saw when we were going around this truck, those are not the factory control arms. And there is a reason for that. And well, the hint is this right here. So here in a second, I'm gonna show you guys the video on why our first mod to this truck has been new control arms. Now, this is probably the most annoying thing about this truck right now that I cannot just absolutely stand. And instead of tell you about it, I'm gonna visualize it for you. So picture it, you're driving along, enjoying your beautiful deep blue water, blue Dodge truck, Cummins turbo diesel, you're listening to that Cummins purring, and well, you go to make a right turn. And what's that you hear? The most worst sound in the world. Keep going, you're dead, you're dead, you're dead, you're dead, you're dead. That's right, your oversized tires and wheels that you're neutral about Luke in the first place that came with the truck are rubbing into the freaking fender wells. Well, what are you gonna do? You can always take a hacksaw to it, just cut everything off, and then, well, you can fit as big a stuff in there as you want. Or you can do it the more expensive and harder way, but in my opinion, the right way, and get rid of these weak control arms. Now, you know we always like to do things the hard way on this channel, so that's right, we're going with the second option. We've got new control arms for this thing, so that'll, in my opinion, take care of two problems. One, hopefully it'll push our axle up enough so that it's not scrubbing because if you know these trucks especially on the 20 well as far back as the second gens the way the suspensions are on these trucks is you've got two control arms up front and when you put a lift or even a leveling kit like on the truck behind me in it you're bringing it down well you're not extending those arms because well that's what you got from the factory so really you're bringing it backwards as well so really if you can get a good view of that and if you're looking at the center of the wheel to where the spring is and everything in the axle it's actually slightly back compared to where it would be if it was at well the naturally raked height that these trucks come from the factory with so with that your boy had to go out and get himself some of the most expensive extravagant craziest diamond crested golden solid silver <laughs> control arms that money can buy and well, here they are. See, they're so expensive and extravagant, they're wrapped up in this fine packaging. And that's what we got right here. And yes, this is just a basic control arm. Because in my opinion, this is really about all you need. With the lack of a decal, which I prefer, just because it's cleaner and, well, you really don't want, you know, a decal on your suspension components, just in my opinion, at least on my truck, that these are Top Gun Customs control arms. These are made for two to three inch lifts, which are really kind of puts you in the ballpark of a level, and they've actually got longer ones for, well, higher lifted trucks. As I was saying, these are the little bit more cost effective version of aftermarket control arms. Still feel very beefy. These things feel solid, feel much better than from the factory ones, which we'll show you side by side once we get them out. But you can go triple, quadruple in price of these for, you know, let's say Carlisle suspension, uh, Thurin, I believe even might make some. Uh, and the special thing about those and the reason the price really gets hiked up there is because right here, instead of a bushing, they put Heim joints. In my opinion, if you, unless you're off-roading the truck a bunch, I don't really see the point of it. I mean, they put bushings from the factory and they work great. These even have Zerk fittings, which the factory ones do not. So for this application, these are going to work just fine for us. Or I could be totally wrong and these could be horrible and I'll end up regretting buying them. But hey, I'm trying them out and not you guys, so... Be thankful for that. Step one of this project is you're gonna wanna get this thing lifted up in the air. Now, we're unfortunate enough not to have a lift, so that means the old fashioned way of a jack and some jack stands in the driveway. If you're fortunate enough, you might have a garage that's big enough for that, but our garage is a little bit short for this tall beast. So the goal is, is you wanna get the truck up, get the big jacks up under the frame, and then that takes most of the weight off the axle, and we can put the smaller jacks under that and adjust it as needed when we're putting in the new control arms.
and there is the difference between the stalkers we got out and then to the right we have the uh, Top Gun Customs. Now, like I said, you've got Zerk fittings on both the bottom and the top. We still got to put the Zerk fittings in that one, but just look at the overall thickness. I mean, if you put the bottom beside this one, look at that. That's just, that's a good difference as far as the thickness there of these two. Also, up top, you're getting rid of the, you know, the thin metal walled kind of welded together uh, upper control arm and you're also getting another thick tube which even the top the tube on for the top is thicker than what was for the bottom so it's a definite upgrade you know in addition to pushing our axle forward so we quit scrubbing on our wheel well liner so with a little effort the driver's side is on well it's loosely on we still got to tighten everything up which we're not going to do until we have the other side on just to make sure if we have to move anything around uh, we'll have the room for it so loosely put on check for this side and for the passenger side you see we've got the top one in working on the bottom one but there's a little bit of a catch to this passenger side let me show you right here is the bolt for the upper rear part of that top control arm now right here beside it is the exhaust and this is a keep in mind an only four inch exhaust not even the biggest a five inch and to get that bolt out enough to put that control arm in you're gonna have to go up there and take the exhaust off the back of the turbo now with all things being as they are when working on stuff it wasn't that simple even at that we actually broke the clamp for that so now we've got to go and replace the clamp so just keep that in mind when you're doing this passenger side that this exhaust especially if you have anything bigger than a four inch is gonna have to come loose luckily you don't have to take anything loose downstream Okay, so right now we're in the process of transferring the weight from our jacks that are holding it by the frame to the front axle. Now we don't have everything bolted up yet or even really tight, but we're going to wait to get it on that axle so everything's kind of under load as if it were on the wheels and tires before we tighten everything up. With that click, our uppers are tightened and torqued which are actually torqued to 120 foot-pounds. So now we got to move on to the bottom ones here, and these are where the big ones are, and these will be torqued to 200 foot-pounds. So fast forward a little bit, we have these things on, we went ahead and we greased them, we torqued them. Also, one thing that doesn't come with these control arm kits is they give you, uh, I guess it would be straight Zerk fittings or grease fittings. What we did is, because if you see here, you've got the uh, upper part there, and then below it, you really don't have much room. And the same with there, and I didn't really want the Zerk fittings or the grease fittings on the bottom because, you know, if it gets hit by like a rock or something or off-roading or anything, you know, that's just something to get knocked off. So I had the great idea. It was a little bit hard. I got them from Napa, but if you can see in there, we've got 90-degree Zerk fittings that work out great. Now, you could have probably got away with the straight ones if you wanted to, but up here is where the 90 is really going to shine because right there in that upper back, you really have limited space. Same with the bottom down there. And as far as greasing it goes, it's super easy. You just stick it in there, grease it up. You don't have to worry about the limited clearance. And also the grease fittings are hidden being on top, protected from any debris that might get flung up and knock it off or shear it off. With that said, these control arms look great on this truck. I think it really ties together the heavy duty look as opposed to those skinny, wimpy old ones. And like I said, guys, that wasn't really the main point of doing that, even though we do have the added strength. But our main point of doing this was our clearance. Now you can see with the wheel turned to, I'd say the tightest part, we have plenty of clearance here, but it was our back that was the problem. As you can see, you know, where it's taken out some of the wheel well on it. Come around to this side and well, it's probably about an inch, but it's enough. I've driven it around a little bit, full turn. I have the full turn and radius back and it does not scrub whatsoever. Now imagine if maybe you were going off road and you got it torqued up high enough, you know, at an angle, it would probably scrub a little bit. But just for your day-to-day -day driving, you've got your full turning and radius back. And yeah, that's mainly the thing I was going for with these wheels and tires because I really did not want to cut into any of this. I felt like with these size of tires being uh, just a little bit bigger than a 33, they are actually uh, 305s. So that's, like I said, slightly bigger than a 33. And then a 10-inch rim, wide rim, uh, 20 by 10. And then the wheel or the tire itself is about 12 and a half inches wide so with the tire and wheel set up that big i felt like trimming shouldn't have to be necessary 
And sure enough, with those control arms pushing the axle back to where it would be if it was stock, you know, not, you know, leveled off at those two inch, two to three inch level, we have enough clearance to clear these wheels. So I'm super excited for that. Now, with all that, thank you guys for watching. If you guys want more content on this truck or the diesel Jeep or even the AMG Mercedes, make sure to go down and subscribe like the video if you liked it and comment and let me know what type of control arms do you use did you find that the more cost effective ones were better or did you guys ball out and go for the real expensive car lie you know all the name brand high end ones with those heim joints and all that fancy goodness let me know down below how do you like those how are they working out for you do you have this kit are they working out for you pretty well did they last we'll see comment below let me know and i'll see